the player who managed to outsmart the dungeon master and the entire party. You slash Muffled Phosphor on r slash RPG Horror Stories says, In our gaming group, we continued this general attitude of weeding out the weaklings. If you were creating a character and said, Hey, can you pass the play? That's as far as you got, because the player's handbook was already in the air coming straight for your head. If you got hit, then you got laughed at. We did a lot of things like that. We were a very unforgiving group. On the plus side, things like these kept everyone very focused. We never had to wait around for people to make up their mind about what their PC was doing, since everyone was formulating their plan of action while the DM did his thing with everyone else. Now, with everyone having their own agenda and whatnot, we devised a system of passing notes to the GM for performing actions, which we were keeping secret from the rest of the players. Mostly, this was mundane things like robbing random houses in town at night, picking the pocket of an NPC, popping off to the outfitter to stock up on arrows, or off to the temple to load up on healing potions. So, notes were being passed constantly, and we kept our private affairs private, unless your note went awry and someone else saw it. We didn't roll dice to see if other players noticed your behavior. It was simple. Bob the Barbarian wanders off. Cedric the Cleric, you're shagging the barmaid? Great. Roll a save versus poison or get the clap. And so on. Another thing that we did, which will become important later, was that if your character died, the rest of us looted the body, and then we burned your character sheet. Temples didn't raise the dead for a modest fee. If the party didn't have resurrection or raised dead, your body would rot where it dropped. That's just how we rolled. In this campaign, we had one new player, the DM's cousin, and the rest of us were regulars. Altogether, there were six of us in our party playing our tried and true characters. Mine was the now infamous Rogan the Red, a human fighter assassin, although nobody knew he was an assassin. Or that's how I like to play it anyway. I always thought it was silly that assassins ran around looking like assassins. That kind of defeated the purpose of being stealthy and whatnot. And given the way the game mechanics worked, I found that trying to murder people with 1d4 damage was ludicrous, so I tended to use a bastard sword. It was easier. For this gaming session, we were starting that most legendary of modules, the one that every playing group ran once they got high enough in level, S3, the Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. Everybody liked the idea of having grenades, power armor, and blaster pistols. I mean, why not, right? The backdrop was the default intro. King Genericus, or whatever his name was, calls out for brave mercenary adventurers to find out where all the weird monsters are coming from that are eating his taxpayer base. We were the motley crew which showed up. That explained why most of us didn't know each other. So it begins. The DM decided that this module was for a much larger group, so he let everyone else make a second character, rather than have him run a bunch of red shirts. I say everyone else because he had something against my character in general, and me in particular I came to discover. Plus, I was a 5th level fighter and 10th level assassin, so he figured I didn't need another character since I was already level 15. Everyone else was good, trademark. LG unless contradicted by class restrictions, like the druid or thief. Rogue wasn't a thing yet. But since I was an assassin, I was NE. I played the character as pretty much pure neutral, aside from the whole murder for hire thing, but I never saw that as any different from what PCs did all the time anyway. But I digress. The very first thing out of the DM's mouth when we all sat down was to tell his cousin's paladin he's evil while pointing at me. Needless to say, I was a bit put out about this. I'm not one for rules lawyering, but we'd all pretty much understood that things like the paladin's detect evil ability were conscious effects, meaning you had to specifically tell the DM you were using it for it to work, and that it really only worked when the target actually had evil intent. Since the new precedent was that he detected my PC's general evilness, I realized very quickly that this would completely overshadow specific instances of evil intent in the future. This was where he screwed the pooch. If he hadn't done this, then the ending would have been completely different, and he had no one to blame but himself. Immediately this put everyone else, who each had two characters at level 10, against me for no other reason than my alignment. Never mind the fact that I'd played with the rest of them for a couple years and we got along fine. They knew which side their bread was buttered on though, and since the DM and his cousin had their eye on me, it would serve the rest of them right to keep an eye on my PC as well. To his credit, however, the DM neglected to actually inform anyone that my primary class was Assassin. I was, after all, a hulking brute with an 1883 strength, wearing plate mail and carrying a sword of sharpness, so my ability to do Assassin things was entirely outside of their notice. Right from the start, they had me on point, but that didn't bother me much. We got to the crashed spaceship, got inside the top level and started to explore. There were a few fights where they made me tank and didn't bother helping me with healing. They saved their spells and made me use up some of my healing potions. We were poisoned by gas at one point, during which I discovered that one of the other player's throwaway characters had a plus one periaptive proof against poisons. I didn't steal it right away, but I made a note of that for later. 
Shortly thereafter, we found one of the keycards that allowed us access to the elevator. The DM wasn't at all clear about describing things, so when he had everyone open a door with the keycard and all pile in, I was just happy I wasn't on point anymore. Then the doors close and the rest of the party is hell and gone, leaving me all alone with no way to rejoin them. During the course of the next hour or so, the rest of the party explores several rooms, while I'm left to my own devices. I got into fights with three random encounters while the main party didn't. I survived. Go me. During my exploration, I found a grey keycard. However, so I'm happy I can rejoin the party. But I don't. Instead, I try and loot other rooms where I'm at, and that's when the DM makes his fatal mistake. While I was rummaging through what I presumed to be an alchemist's lab, I discovered wonderful powder, which grants infravision, a few mild poisons, some jars of strong acid, and then the mother of all poisons. It's very important to point out at this juncture that the stats of the poison I found were a munchkin -y attempt to permanently take me out. The DM ruled that the sweet-smelling green powder which I subsequently tasted was a very powerful nerve agent. He informed me that because I tasted it, I had to make a save verse poison at negative 10. I rolled a 20 and was very gleeful. Then he rolls again and informs me I have 3 HP left. Yes, you heard that correct. This poison is so toxic that if you make your save, you only have 1d4 HP left. So, I'm pretty pissed off at this point, but I have a ton of this poison, so I put it away for a rainy day, drink the last of my healing potions, and try and survive until the end of this module. I really wasn't paying attention after this point. Pleading self-preservation due to low HP, which nobody heals, thanks guys, I offer fire support with my bow, and avoid melee the rest of the game. We played every day after school for a week to finish this beast of a module. There was a lot to it. The paladin got his power armor, the other fighter got his blaster rifle and grenades, and they tried to give me the shaft. And on the way home I pick one fellow's pocket of one item, which I replace with a nearly identical appearing item. Because I swap a gemstone for valuable gemstone, the DM doesn't put up too much of a fuss when I pill for the cleric's periapt. At the very end we were at an inn licking our wounds and splitting up the treasure. This is where the DM got too clever for his own good. Being a somewhat realistic minded bunch, it was standard practice not to wear armor or carry heavy weapons in towns. The DM made a point to bring this to everyone's awareness. For the after party nobody was armed with anything more dangerous than a dagger, and nobody had any armor, except maybe the mages with their magical bracers and wizard robes, but that barely counts as armor. I asked very quickly if there's time for me to buy wine for the party. I had to spend 500 GP on a cask of wine enough for all of us. More punishment for being evil, trademark, I suppose. I then hand the wine over to the innkeeper's wife and pay her extra not to drink it when she pours it into jugs and serves it to the party. Yes, I did that. So, we all write quick notes about what we're bringing to the party. I pass a note to the DM about checking the other players, but there are no surprises. Nobody brings any serious weapons since there are weapons in the loot on the table anyway, and the last thing anybody is expecting is a fight. I write my note and pass it to him, and I made a note on the back which I'll point out later. I had three daggers, all magical, my plus two ring of protection, and my newly pilfered periapt. The DM's cousin's other character, the same cleric I lifted the periapt off of, arrives late with a bag of holding, and adds its contents to the pile of treasures we're all going to pick from. I immediately recognize my sword of sharpness, my plus three plate mail, my bow and magic arrows, and all my other valuables which I had left up in my room. The DM reasoned that since I steal from the other players that it's only fair they get to go through my stuff and take whatever they want. Since I'm outnumbered and outgunned by a dozen level 15 plus wizards, clerics, rangers, bards, and druids, I really don't have much choice in the matter. Me being me, I make an attempt to point out the unfairness, but the DM overrules me. Not unexpected, I suppose, at this point. He pushes on with the party and they plan to drink the wine I bought, while they split up all my money and things between themselves and have a good laugh. So they toast on it and we all drink. A few of the players were a little leery since it was my wine, but when they see me drink, they all drink as well. I was counting on that. That is, after all, the purpose of a toast, to slosh the wine between all the cups, so everyone drinks the same thing. And I stop everyone at that point and announce to the entire group, everyone make a save against poison at negative 10. There was a moment of intense consternation, then the DM reads the back of the note I gave him earlier and realizes WTF I just did to everyone, or rather, what he did to everyone. With that nerve toxin in the wine, everybody needs a very high saving throw just to survive with 1d4 HP. The paladin died, his cleric died, the ranger died, the druid died, the bard died, I hate bards, so yay. Everyone died. The only ones who made their roll were the thief and one of the wizards. Everyone else died instantly. Then it was my turn to roll a save. The DM looked pretty smug since he was sure I couldn't get another natural 20. But I didn't need to. I had the parry apt, so I only needed to make a regular save with no negative modifier. I think I rolled an 11 or something stupid. Passed easily. He gave me 1 HP left just to be a dick I suppose. 
Before anyone else realized they needed to do anything, I threw a poison dagger at the wizard and jumped the thief. Wizard died, thief died, and that was that. It turns out it actually is easy to kill people with a dagger when they only have 4 HP. I think my strength bonus damage was higher than their hit points. They never had a chance. I wish at the time that I knew the phrase hoist on his own petard, because it would have been fitting. He never expected me to do anything like that with something he had made up just to get me. I wasn't just a good assassin, I was a great assassin. He never gave me my experience points for killing all those high level monsters either, but I did burn their character sheets. That point was non-negotiable. They didn't like it, but that was how we rolled. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. I personally do not like dungeon masters who make the party aware of player's alignment because he doesn't like it. They need to man up and state it up front. That's how you get back at a jerk DM and party. We take our leave and promise to come back with more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content. Meanwhile, make sure to subscribe to our channel.